Welcome to EC3030. So in this video lecture, we will continue our discussion on DRAMs. So uh, in this video lecture, we will uh, look into the scaling of DRAMs and then we will look into uh, what we call the memory wall. Right? So DRAM scaling. So the uh, we have previously seen that uh, the transistors, uh, they are scaling. Uh, <coughs> down they are downscaling so every uh, 18 months or so the density of uh, uh, transistors uh, they double meaning that the area fruit footprint of a transistor every 18 months becomes half so a similar scaling paradigm is also uh, there for the DRAMs so in this uh, plot over here uh, what we are showing is how the uh, minimum feature size in the DRAM technologies have evolved over time. So in this case uh, the minimum scaling <coughs> minimum feature size has halved over around 5.4 years. It's still exponentially the number of uh, D, uh, DRAM cells in a chip uh, has increased exponentially it's slower than uh, the transistors but still it the density of DRAM cells increased uh, exponentially with time so for example in 1980s uh, the DRAM size uh, was 64 kilobit so a chip contained 64 kilobits uh, of DRAM cells and now we get uh, chips uh, DRAM chips which have 8 gigabit of memory or 16 gigabit of memory so in uh, in essence uh, DRAM has been scaling uh, significantly and if we look at the cost per bit <coughs> figure of merit the cost per bit has decreased or the number of bits that you can get per dollar has also increased significantly exponentially over time so the number of bits that you can get per dollar has actually doubled every one and a half years all right so now let's look at how the DRAM structure looks like and how uh, scaling affects the DRAM structure so uh, what is being shown here is the cross-section of a DRAM cell. Uh, now this is an old generation of DRAM cross uh, DRAM. So essentially here what we have so this one over here is this access transistor and then this DRAM capacitor is this one. So a capacitor is basically uh, a oxide or an insulator sandwich between two uh, conducting layers so for example here we have metal so this metal can be an n plus uh, polysilicon as well the same material that we use in this source or drain or it can be a, just a polysilicon and so you have one top metal contact top conducting contact and one bottom conducting contact and then this is connected to the ground so that's how this uh, this structure is essentially a capacitor and then this is connected to the <coughs> uh, the, uh, the <coughs> uh, source or drain terminal of this access transistor. So the way the connections are made is this. So this, this terminal over here is connected to the bit line. On the other hand, the gate terminal of the access transistor is connected to the word line and this is connected to the ground and essentially this structure is equivalent to this circuit like this all right so now if you have to scale it uh, essentially the device the structure will become smaller as you progress through generations so for example this is the nth generation say this is the n plus one generation and this is say n plus two gen 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 two generation so note that uh, what are the things that are changing so this is the thickness of the oxide 
for the DRAM capacitor and this is one of the lateral dimensions say for example this is W1 and you have another de uh, another dimension that is out of the plane say that dimension is W2 now as you scale down what will happen is that both uh, all of these dimensions T aux W1 and W2 will all change and uh, based on what you have seen in Denard scaling you will see that the n plus 1 generation capacitance in n plus 1 generation will actually be smaller than the capacitance of the story uh, of this DRAM capacitor by a factor of x so let's use s to denote that this is the capacitance of the storage capacitor capacitor in a DRAM cell <coughs> all right so now you can readily understand what the problem is with DRAM scaling the uh, DRAM scaling like this so essentially as you go uh, progress to different generations your capacitance will decrease and if your capacitance decreases that means that essentially the amount of charge that you can hold will decrease and if the amount of charge that the storage capacitor holds decreases then the refresh time will also has to reduce meaning that you will have to refresh the DRAM cells more frequently and this is a problem that you want don't want to do so essentially what happened was that the structure of DRAMs in modern generation is different from what we have seen in the previous slide so what most of the DRAM technologies use is called a trench capacitor so this is the structure of a trench capacitor that is shown here so you have the same access transistor but at the source terminal of the access transistor you create a trench so this this color over here this is an n plus region and then this red region over here is the oxide and then you have another n plus uh, polymetal region so essentially what you have is uh, this oxide region the red region sandwiched between two conducting layers this n plus region and this source region over here of the, the source of the transistor and this is grounded and again this terminal over here is connected to the bit line and this is connected to the word line all right so why do we use trench capacitor the reason is that the trench capac capacitor allows for decreasing the DRAM footprint without having the having to decrease the capacitor effective area so why is that <coughs> so what you can do is in every generation you can make everything smaller except for that the trench capacitor you can keep the trench the same physical shape meaning that you can make this dimension of the trench decrease a little bit but at the same time you can increase the depth of the trench D trench so every successive generation you can make the trench deeper and deeper and if you make the trench deeper and deeper then you will see that you can compensate the <coughs> decrease of the footprint by increase of the trench depth because if you increase the trench depth then the effective so the area of the capacitor is proportional to the depth of the trench as a result if you increase the depth of the trench you can increase the capacitance of the capacitor and this trench capacitor the aspect ratio meaning the depth of the trench divided by this length or the footprint one of the dimensions of the footprint can actually be as high as 100 to 1 so for example here uh, 
this is a cross-sectional image of a DRAM with a trench capacitor and these are the trenches that you see here these are the transistors over here these are the access transistors and these are the trenches and you can see that see how deep these trench capacitors can be so this is how a DRAM scaling is done these days all right so now we have seen that uh, the density of DRAMs are increasing but increasing the density of DRAMs does not mean isn't that you can increase the speed of the DRAM so we will look into it uh, into a little bit more details in the next slide but let's review what this what our inability inability to increase the access time of DRAM means in terms of <coughs> computing technologies so just to reiterate the clock speed of our CPUs has increased at a rate much faster than that of the DRAM access times note that the mic the transistor density in CPUs has increased exponentially and so has the density of DRAMs over time now making the transistor smaller also meant that the speed of the microprocessors could increase the clock frequency could increase uh, until 2005 but that did not mean that uh, but scaling of the DRAM cells did not mean that their access time could increase at the same rate as their density so we'll look into why that is the case but for now for example between 1986 and 2000 the CPU speed improved at an annual rate of 55% where the memory speed increased by memory uh, just 10% and as a result we have hit a bottleneck that is called the memory wall and that memory wall means that because of the disparity of the speed between the CPU and the memory that is outside the CPU chip which is DRAM we cannot take advantage of the fact that CPUs are getting faster so for example what this plot sh over here shows that <coughs> that the CPU performance essentially the clock speed has increased like this over time while the DRAMs that has increased but the gap between the speed of DRAM and CPU has only increased over time and this is essentially what the memory wall means so just to give you an example so in 1980 <coughs> the clock speed was uh, 120 megahertz while the memory access time was 1.2 microseconds so if we do a simple calculation so 1980 the clock frequency was 10 megahertz so the clock speed was around 100 nanoseconds right on the other hand the memory access time so let's call it memory was around one microsecond so how long did it how many cycles did you have to wait to get some data from the DRAM or the main memory to CPU so for example this is the CPU and this is the main memory which is the DRAM so say the CPU asked for a data from the memory and it had to wait how many cycles so the number of cycles it had to wait was one microsecond my own microsecond is the time for the memory to come from uh, the data to come from the memory to the CPU so 10 microsecond divided by one cycle is 100 nanoseconds so 10 cycles so again once a CPU asks for a data from the memory it required 10 cycles for the data to come to the CPU in 1980 now let's fast forward to 2016 the clock frequency is 4 gigahertz so the clock uh, the <coughs> clock period is 1 over 4 into 10 power 9 seconds so essentially 0 0.25 nanoseconds 
on the other hand the memory access time is around 80 nanoseconds so now the number of cycles that you have to wait until the data comes from the memory to cpu is 80 over 0.25 so essentially 320 cycles so in 2016 with these specs you had to wait 320 cycles for the data to come from the memory to cpu while in 1980 that was just 10 cycles so you can get an idea about the increasing gap between the performance of the memory which is essentially the main memory of the DRAM and the performance of the CPU. So why is that the case? So essentially the question is why can't we increase the DRAM speed? Actually the truth is that uh, DRAM speed has also increased over time. The speed of the <coughs> DRAM cells and the bottleneck is not essentially an intrinsic is not intrinsic to the physical mechanisms as to how the DRAM works rather it has to do with the fact that DRAM is off chip now what does being off chip means off chip means that the DRAM is not within the same chip as that of the microprocessor so for example if you look at a motherboard this is where the cpu is or the microprocessor chip is and these are the this is the place where the dram goes in and the connection between the microprocessor and the dram happens through the wires in this pcb so these are these connections that connects the microprocessor with the dram and these wires are not fast these are slow now whatever engineering you do as long as dram is off chip you cannot do much to improve the access time of the drams meaning that you will have to wait a certain amount of time before the data that you requested comes to you and this has all this has more to do with the fact that dram or the main memory is off chip so with that what are the possible solutions so one of the solutions is that you in, <coughs> you include some caches meaning that between the main memory and the microprocessor you have two or three different layers of memory l1 l2 l3 or l4 cache and what this cache do these caches do is that they bring some data in advance which is called prefetching into this memory and because uh, these caches are close to the microprocessor the access times can be slower than that of the DRAMs okay so now what you can clearly see the importance of cache is that by looking into the history of caches so for example in 1980 there were no cache there there was just the cpu and there was the main memory which is the dram now in 1995 you had two level there were two levels of caches and now there are even more three or four and another uh, way of uh, trying another effort to reduce this memory bottleneck is to put some drams in the l3 cache and the technology is called EDRAM and EDRAM is not exactly off chip rather what it's done is that <coughs> this EDRAM is put on the back end of the microprocessors so we haven't really talked about how uh, back end devices work but the bottom line is that to reduce the memory access time there are increasing discussion about putting some DRAM technologies on the back end of the microprocessor technology. All right. So finally, the memory hierarchy. So again, uh, we will compare DRAM with SRAM here. So as we have said previously that SRAMs 
the density is very slow because you need at least six transistors to make an SRAM. On the other hand, in a DRAM, you need just one transistor and one capacitor. So this is called 1T1C where the T stands for transistor and C stands for capacitor. And so because it requires just one capacitor and one transistor, this can be extremely high density compared to SRAMs. But on the other hand, SRAM is extremely fast because it is essentially made of lot of transistors and transistors are fast. On the other hand, DRAMs is DRAM is slow because of two reasons. Once it's a it, because the storage element is capacitor, and it requires some amount of time to read and write into this capacitor. Because and the reason it uh, requires some time is because it's a you have to. Uh, charge it to a certain value or discharge it wait until it is discharged to both read and write on the other hand DRAM is also off chip so essentially you are bottlenecked by the off chip connections between the CPU and the DRAM chip so that's why the DRAM speed is much slower than the SRAM and it's uh, actually uh, saturate it saturated around 80 nanoseconds all right, and then uh, the non-volatility, both SRAM and DRAM are non-vol are volatile uh, because if you put VDD to zero, SRAM will lose all its data because all the node voltages will go to zero. Similarly, for DRAM, if you put VDD to zero, this capacitor will discharge to zero, no matter what the initial data stored was there. All right. Now, if you compare with flash, so the flash, the density is higher uh, than SRAM and it's also a little bit higher than DRAM and the reason is because flash is a single transistor device. On the other hand, it's very slow. It's uh, the time is uh, time, time to write into flash is of the order of 10 microseconds, but the flash is non-volatile, meaning that even if it loses power, flash will keep its data on the other hand uh, magnetic hard drives the density is extremely high and it's also extremely cheap and that's why you get uh, hundreds of terabytes of data uh, <coughs> hundreds of terabytes of data storage in magnetic hard drives on the other hand they're extremely slow the time to read or write into the magnetic hard drives is of the order of milliseconds and the magnetic hard drives are also non-volatile.